In this video, we will look into the MLOps capabilities of Hypersense AI. Hypersense AI is a distributed computing enabled no code multi persona enterprise AI platform to build, deploy, and maintain AI models at scale. It helps democratize AI across a larger audience of business experts. It also has end to end MLOps capabilities to monitor, maintain, and govern ML operations on top of deploying models to get better business results. So let's start from a custom pipeline. So this is a custom pipeline that we have built. So as you can see, there are a um, couple of branches. So to explore different to experiment with different uh, classifier algorithms. So in one case, we have specified random forest classifier. And in another one, we have specified like GBM. So apart from that, uh, the rest of the branch is all same. Like from CSV there, we have done a missing value imputation. And then from there, we have done certain encoding. And then, some sam and then sampling, we have split into train and test. And we have attached to classifier operators. Right. So <clears throat> once we have this, so this is currently until now what we have done is an experimentation. Right. So post this, if we want to start our MLOps flow, then we say like publish model. So we can we can see this both these models are listed from this classifier. So we can maybe like you know choose the LGBM which has a better metric and then say apply so now an entry is created in the model catalog this one is earlier i've done so there's an entry created in the model catalog okay so now um, from here the mlops flow starts okay so now also like you know we have to make sure that whatever that i'm doing it is under a particular project so project is how like you know we can group um, all of our different pipelines for a particular um, uh, objective, like it can, can be a campaign management or customer churn or so and so. All right. Now, um, so there is a version also we can note. I'll just come to that in a bit. Um, so first, let's try to complete the flow. So from this uh, model uh, catalog, we can do the deployment to staging and from staging there is an approval which is required so once the approval is obtained it goes into production so this is the flow okay so for this like first we'll have to deploy to the staging we can give um, uh, some name and then we have two options uh, either i can deploy a model or i can deploy the pipeline if i um, choose the model then you know uh, what will happen is so this MLOps flow eventually what is going to give you is an REST endpoint, right? So what kind of input that the user should give to the REST endpoint? So that is based on what you're choosing here. So if we are choosing like deploy model, now remember like all the pre-processing that we had done uh, in the pipeline, that should be done outside of this application and like all the processed data should be fed to the REST endpoint. Now, if we choose deploy pipeline, um, this application will on its own will uh, do all the pre-processing and the, it is sufficient if the user is sending the raw records. So if we have done an encoding as like, you know, if gender is converted into um, say male is zero and female is one. Um, so if it is pipe deploying a pipeline and if there is an encoding operator which is done, so um, automatically application will handle if the user is just sending the request as male. Okay. But in case of model, they'll have to send the actual um, pre-processed data. So that is a difference. So, so let me deploy this. So I already had the, so, uh, uh, an entry deployed. Okay. So I have um, SIVA Sanity 22. So this is a deployment I have. So this is currently in staging. Uh, now let's see like you know what are those things that we can do in this okay so first thing is we have an uh, view report wherein um, a data scientist can write their uh, summary uh, so what is this project is about what we are trying to achieve um, what kind of data we have obtained so and so and uh, based on the pre-processing that whatever we have done whatever the dropped columns are there those things we are listing here 
um, and what are the pre-processing that we have done so there is a missing value treatment we have done like you know um, credit product we have used mode as a missing value treatment and we are done label encoding in for pretty much rest of the categorical variables and this was the model result and then comes the model uh, validation so here there's a sample record which is shown so user can actually change any of these values and um, they can do predict so and the rest of these three options are actually for explanation so by default explanations will not be uh, enabled so in this case i have just kept it enabled um, so because like it requires additional computation so it is on demand the user can enable it or disable it so we have like anchor uh, which actually tells about which column actually anchors this prediction so we are getting zero as prediction so which columns likely like you know um, uh, which is influencing that particular result and uh, so in the feature contributions we can see you know how uh, each of those features are contributing towards a positive or negative side and uh, also we can have um, counterfactuals um, I'm not sure if it generates any counterfactuals yeah so in this case what it is telling us if they average so it, the initial prediction was zero now if it has to be one like maybe uh, the account uh, average account balance if it is increased then you know it, it will change to one and like you know if, if, if credit product is missing or if it is changed to yes you know in some cases with, with this corresponding account balance value for this vintage which is like you know kind of tenure in that uh, um, uh, enterprise so with these things like you know um, the is lead will can can become one so this is a counterfactual that system will generate also okay now how do we go for approval so this view is like you know this is the um, um login of uh, the data scientist or engineer who actually created this deployment so now they themselves cannot uh, go and approve so how the approval works is we'll have to share this particular um, deployment with somebody who can approve this Have to share this. So yes, right. Now, so in a different session, I have logged in as you So now, if I go to shared, I see in staging, so I can see this pipeline. I can come here. I can see this view report. I can go through all those testing process. And then once I'm satisfied, I can add a review here. It says approved. I'm allowing it to deploy. So now this is done. So we can come back here. This. Now we can deploy it to production. So now it allows us to deploy it to production, right? Now even before uh, you know going into production, so we'll just see like in you know, a couple of more features also. Um, so for enabling explanation, this is the option. So as I mentioned earlier, I had already enabled it. Um, and counterfactually, you can choose those um, columns for which you want to see the counterfactuals. <laughs> And also you can um, choose the model monitoring also. So as of now, we have um, three model monitoring that we can do. So one is data quality, another one is model quality, and uh, the third one is the drift. So data quality is, um, is, is basically like, you know, um, when you are sending the request to these rest endpoints, um, so if, what if certain columns value is dropped, they're not being sent? So somebody has to be kept informed about it, or like what if the particular column was looking for um, an integer value, but a string is passed, or um, like you know missing value, and if if there is any missing value, uh, if we have a missing value treatment, it will handle those missing values. But we are expecting like you know one or two percent missing values, but what if it is like you know. 20 or 30 percent missing value so somebody has to be kept aware of it maybe we'll have to uh, tweak those um, algorithms again or pipeline again um say and, and also like you know new categories say um we have built the model like say while building the model the enterprise was having like say 10 products and um in production like slowly there is another product which was also um deployed right so if there is a new category which is coming in so then also our prediction will fail so again uh, data scientists again we'll have to revisit it uh, and range checks say suppose like uh, if you're having uh, columns like uh, age uh, right so 
um, if you want to specify like uh, the value should be like only from 30 to 40 or like say 30 to 70 or something like this so we can specify these um, values as well um, so accordingly it will generate alerts so who it will send the alerts to so we can select the email id as well of the user right so we specify this batch sizes um, so basically like you know not for every single record we need to um, inform the user so we can specify batch of like say 100 or 1000 or so um, so based on which uh, it will accumulate all those uh, transactions and then it will send out an alert email and uh, so model quality basically like you know you can um, upload a file so if you click on download like you know it will um, start downloading a sample file um, then the like, user can change um, whatever the columns in it and then they can uh, upload it again so this way like you know we don't uh, uh, make any mistakes on the format or the sequence of the data and then comes the drift so drift basically identifies uh, say suppose if when during uh, while we are training the model uh, generally the salary was salary of the customers were ranging from like say uh, 50,000 to 70,000 or something like that and uh, in production slowly uh, the the users uh, changed and like you know now the uh, the average salary or not average salary the salary distribution is like say from uh, maybe like you know 65,000 to uh, 1.2 lakhs or something 120,000 or something like that um so in that kind of case there will be a significant divergence which had happened in the distributions um, of uh, the salary column uh, when compared with the training data set and with the production data set so those things will be automatically identified so we'll have to um, accumulate those uh, uh, requests which we are getting um, so because like you know the uh, distribution is um, if you want to get a distribution, it needs, um, you know, a, a sample population set, right? it's a sample data set, right? So until um, we get that, um, so there won't be any alert. So once this thousand records is, uh, uh, once we get this thousand records, so all the thousand records will be accumulated and then the distribution will be calculated and the divergence also will be calculated, okay? So if, if there is any divergence, so user can actually see those data here. If there is any um, monitoring alerts, they can see it here. So there was no drift in this. There is no drift detected. Um, and yeah, so in the data quality, yeah, so there were some 100 columns which I'm missing. So if there is any drift, it will come out here. Okay. Now we can actually push it to um, production as well. We can deploy it to production. Okay. Now we can also see the um, lineage view here. Okay. So there was a training pipeline and from there we move to a model catalog and from there to staging and now to production. Okay. Now we can also create multiple versions from this model catalog and uh, you know that also we can move it to staging and then to production as well right so we'll just quickly see uh, how to create the versions now okay so as part of ml ops it is important to maintain this lineage view right um, so hence like you know once it is pushed uh, this particular pipeline is pushed into um, model catalog so we will not allow the option to uh, option for editing this okay so to, before editing, what we have to do is uh, we have to create a version, right? So the process of creating version is you have to create a snapshot first. So now we have created a snapshot. Now you can um, edit this particular pipeline. Say I'm changing this LGBM to like say random forest again, maybe just for this demo. I'll just give it a minute to complete so if you had noticed like you know while submitting this run button it had asked for this vcpus and uh, ram so for each of this pipeline you can actually specify these and uh, so we also have uh, both distributed pipeline and also a standard pipeline so standard pipeline runs with only one worker in the distributed mode you can run with multiple workers so whatever the resources that we specify there um, it will be applicable for each of the workers um, so this way, like, you know, the user has a better 
control over the cluster's resources, right? So in the coming roadmap, we'll also have, um, you know, at project level, we can um, allocate resources. Um, so and uh, whoever is working, how many of our parallel pipelines um, the users are running, uh, the upper limit would be the allocated resources at the project level. It is completed, um, but still just seconds until the pipeline status is completed. Now we are done with this pipeline. So then complete the status, the snapshot is there. So now we can create a version. So now the version gets updated. Now we can follow the same process. This, now this version two can go into the staging environment also. Let's see. Sorry. The move, now version two. Right. Just take a minute or so to come up. Yeah, now this is also up. See the lineage. Yeah. So we can see there are two versions which are created and how it is going on to staging. So we can the user can have a clear view of the lineage. View. So the similar thing we can also do um, with an external model app as well. So instead of creating this custom pipeline, you can do an external model. So in case um, if in the current team um, that are data scientists, we have already um, you know developed um, certain models, and now they want to uh, get, have a way to host it, or um, uh, they want to follow this entire ML op cycle, they can use this. So let me just show what are the information that it needs. So basically, to enable all the monitoring and explanations, so the system would need a representative data set. Okay. So that has to be uploaded. And once that is uploaded, we'll have to upload the, the pickle file. Um, so the models that we support is uh, you know, all of the SKLN models, uh, Exiboost, CatBoost, uh, LightGBM. And the versions is any versions which are, um, which have launched on and after 2020, um, all of those versions we support. So that is the only constraint that we have here. So once we have these things, so then we can, once uh, we upload the pickle files and the sample representative data set, we can see like, you know, if if, uh, if you are able to uh, host it and consume it. So it will come up with certain recommendations on like, you know, um, what, what is this uh, particular um, uh, model framework and versions and everything. So, if it is not able to automatically pick it up, the user can specify it here. So once this is done, it'll it'll also like you know flow through the same uh, MLOps flow. Okay, so this is all uh, a demo for on the MLOps side. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.